they were in the trough of Boland in Lancashire with a renowned handler, Thomas Longton. Thomas, I often start by asking people, you know, how did you get started in sheepdogs? But in your case, like Longton's is a name that sort of started sheepdogs. How far back does it go? Um, um, when, when, did it, when did Longton's get started in sheepdogs, really, I suppose? Well, two generations ago, my grandfather was a, a top handler. And my, fa my father and all his brothers, they all worked sheepdogs to a high level. Yeah. Your grandfather was Tim. He was called Tim, Timothy, yeah. yes. Um, would that have been like in 1930 or back before the war? Or when was that? Yeah, just before the war, probably. Yeah. Well, he stopped running the dogs during the war. Yeah. So in the 50s, most of it was done. And, and uh, I've heard an awful lot of, of your father, Tot, and indeed your, your cousin Tim, uh, his father, Timothy Longton, as well. But, uh, you know, Tot, like there's, there must be some great stories going back there. To yeah, well, Tot and Tim travelled together all over the place. They go to trials. Every time there was a sheepdog trial, they went off in their car together with all the dogs. And I suppose they'd have fellas like Jim Cropper in the car sometimes too, would they? Yeah, well, Jim was relatively younger than them then, and uh, he used to go around with them and they used to enjoy each other's company. Yeah. And uh, so then, well, you grew up with your father, Todd. Did you, did you take the sheepdog straight away or was it something you just sort of grew up with working without even noticing? Or how did it start? Um, well, actually, I was more interested in playing sport. Yeah. I was a, used to play rugby and cricket, a little bit of football. And I thought the sheepdog training was really an old man's game. And it probably is. Um, but now I've sort of gone full cycle and I want the young ones to do better. Yes, yes. I encourage the young ones a little bit more. And how do you mean the young ones? Well, young ones, young at heart, the new handlers. There are a lot of people now who are getting interested in working border collies. Yeah. They've got a border collie and it doesn't do anything else. It doesn't chase a ball anymore. And sometimes you take it to work the sheep and it does that really well. Yes, yes. And so they get an interest. I, I often, well, we often, it was at a meeting recently we had there and we're talking about how would we encourage more young handlers into the sport. and. Toddy Lamb, he's a friend of mine there, and, and indeed yeah. she's in a way with dogs with us. He, uh, you know, he helps a lot of people and he starts a lot of people. Have you any ideas? Is there anything we could do to encourage more handlers into the sport? Well, I, I saw an interview with Toddy and I thought it was really well spoken what he said. And I do a similar sort of thing. I encourage new handlers to come to our local sheepdog trials. And you've got to make the course easy for them. Yes. Because the problem they've got is they haven't been used to working sheep. And that is the issue. They've got to have a small course where the sheep are nice, and you can get a good good experience. And then we we have some new handlers. With one fellow near me, uh, and he was a school teacher. He's a retired school teacher, so you could say he wasn't that young when he started. But no. the interesting part for me is that, like he's coming from school teacher, he never had sheep or anything, mm. and yet I can see him. His handling is improving. He's probably about four years in in nurseries mm -hmm. and that, and I can see it coming to him. But how, how, what can handlers do to help themselves get, like, feel? You and I, you know, you grow up with sheep, you know how to get them in through gates and things like that. But for these people who know nothing about them, I always think it's fascinating how they can, how they can develop that. Is there anything we can do to encourage it, to speed it up for them? Um, no, I think, I think it's just something they're going to have to learn themselves. And I think some people pick it up quickly. It, it's like anything. Some people really do, do it really fast. Um, they've just got to get experience with working with the sheep and see what the reaction of the sheep is when you do certain things. Mm. And that's the way to do it. Um, in your own case, when, when you came to dogs, like after the cricket and after the rugby, what sort of age were you when you first went out and, and broke a dog out to trial? Um, I think when I was younger, I used to get the dogs that were a little bit too easy to handle. Whereas when you get to a national level, I think my first national was 78, well, I'd be 26 then or something like that. So I was well in, towards towards my thirties. Yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, and so then, like I remember, you won a supreme. I know it's a little while ago now, but when was yeah. that? Uh, it's a long time ago, nineteen eighty-six. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the eighties. I was in the I was in the team in the seventies. So I've been in the team most decades since yeah. the seventies. Seventy-nine was the first time in the team. And you had a lot of success at international level in the eighties and, and around yeah. that time. Yeah, I had two. I had a really good spell of dogs, and there's no substitute for having a good dog. You know, I don't care what people say. If you haven't got a good dog, you can't handle a sheep. You, you're lost. You yeah. need a good dog. And I had a good one. They came one after another, then I had three really good dogs in a row. And is it as simple as that, that, that you got really good dogs? And I thought you could still just put your hand on a good dog. It might take a little while and all. But, uh, like, uh, put it this way, I often, I often say it in, in our interviews that in Ireland, 
I, I always hear it said, my whole life I've heard it said, you only ever get one good dog in your life. Yeah. And it's a thing that kind of annoys me a little bit because I thought you could get a good dog anytime you want. You know, within 12 months. Like, yeah, but, you know, I really enjoy, I still enjoy going to the nationals, the internationals, watching the dogs run. And to me, a really gifted dog is a bit like Rory McIlroy who plays golf or Ronnie O'Sullivan who plays snooker. He's just falling out of the sky. Yes. And they just, they just do it without thinking. Yes. And that's what a really good dog does. They just, they just seem to balance the sheep really well. And I've met all the handlers in a way with dogs, Thomas. And I have to say, you're not like any of them. You know, you you, you seem to have a completely different style. I don't know what it is. You seem you seem like you you're so laid back that you don't you couldn't really care if you won or not. But uh, your results aren't like that. I always associate you with a fellow that I well, you're a fellow I expect to see in a supreme, but. How would you describe your style of, I don't know, your hunting or, like, you are different, like, the way you go at it? Um, I suppose I'm not as bothered as some, maybe. I am very competitive any sport I do. I play a little bit of golf now. And the hardest thing of that is to relax. And it's the same with the dogs. If the dogs don't relax, they don't have the best run. You can't swing at a golf club if you don't relax. But you've got to concentrate as well, so that makes it really complicated. Yeah, that's the tricky mix. I watched you this year in the Supreme uh, in Ireland and I, I really enjoyed you watching you shedding because you were allowing it to happen and still when the opportunities were there, you were taking them, you know. Uh, that, uh, well, I think I was a little bit lucky this year. I wasn't too sure about the sheep. Those Irish black-faced sheep, they are tricky little things. And I think it just happened for me a little bit on the day. And I was trying, because I had an old dog and I didn't want her to get faced by a fast-running sheep. So I sort of helped her a little bit myself. And I was just lucky that they came out. Yeah, yeah. And it's just so nice to finish a course. It's yeah, lovely. well, funny you say it's lucky, but I, I, I like the way you were working there. And it was just, uh, allowed you knew what you were doing and you were letting letting them come too, you know, maybe. But then, um, the, the, like, you've been out in so many internationals and all. What's it like, uh, I ask people too, like, how do you prepare for something like that before you go out to the stake? Or say maybe in the national where you're thinking, I want to be in the Supreme or I want to be in the international this year. You've yeah. got 15 minutes to, to do it, or maybe you have two dogs. What do you do, um, you know, before you go to the stake in a national? Or what are you thinking about before? Um, to me, the national is much harder because you've got 150 dogs. Um, so I feel more pressure at the national because... People expect so much, it's really, you know, everybody expects Longtons to do this, to do that. And the sheep don't know that. Mm. They don't know whose dog it is, you know, and it's really hard to keep keep being successful. And I think it comes in phases. When you get to the international, it doesn't really matter, you've cracked it. Yeah. You've got there, you're in the team, and to get into the last day is just a joy. Yes. You know, and the last day is just a working job. Yes. And the dogs that would do that are just proper work dogs. Yes. Yeah, indeed. I, I love the, the, the final day because I think, you know, it's especially that getting the bunch into shed, yeah. you know, it's such a practical thing that you'd be doing here, you know, sooner than bring sheep into the yard, yeah. maybe, and things like that. But what's the difference between, like, I see dogs that are in the money, you know, on any given Sunday, and you kind of expect them to be in the money. And then maybe at national level, they you know, they struggle a little bit, or you don't see them going on to international like you should. And maybe there are with handlers that that can put him through the eye of a needle. Does an international dog, is he something a little bit different? Well, I think he's. I think he's got to have a bit more backbone, a bit more grit in him that can do a big course, because he's got, he's got to get around that course in 20 minutes, because he's only got 10 minutes to shed them. Mm. So they've got to sort of get moving. Yeah. And you don't want a dog hanging around, just walking about. And what does a dog look like when you're breaking out a dog for nurseries and all? When do you kind of see signs or what are you looking for that you're thinking, yes, this could be an international dog or this is what I'm going to keep? Um, I like them to have a good balance on the sheep and naturally balance back to me. But I want my young dogs to be sort of pushing them past me a little bit, really. I don't mind them if they're strong when they're yes. young. They never get any stronger as they get older. They always go a little bit lighter. Yes. So, you know, by the time you've got them trained, they want to be three years old. And then you've got five good years. They've only got five good years Yes. at the top level. And then after that, they're, they're getting too clever or they're slowing down. <laughs> getting too clever, I hadn't thought of that. But uh, like you say, the window, really in a dog's life, the window's very small for doing it whatever is. you're going and to do. And that's why it's hard to be at the top all the time. Yeah. That's why it's really hard. But uh, I was talking to you before about something. I don't even really know how to put it into words now, but we just try it. And it was to do with 
lifting sheep and that and I often tend to think that I just can't seem to kind of get the pace right um, and, and I wonder sometimes if it's my personality everything I kind of come a little bit quick with everything and I kind of push and force things a little bit more than I should mm. instead of and, and I'm wondering how to find that right pace and you said to me before but we were talking about sheep and straight lines and things like that and you were talking about letting the sheep you know find their path down the field yeah. on the pitch can you tell me a little bit yeah. about um I really like my dog to be able to bring the sheep all the way down the fetch with very few commands if I can. The fewer the better. So they've got to get like a flow with the sheep and pace the sheep. And if, if they're coming too fast, then you've got to try and slow them down. If they're coming too slow, you've got to quicken them up. You do the opposite of what the sheep are doing. So you try and stop your dog if the sheep are coming too fast. If they're coming too slow, you make your dog come quicker. What could I do maybe to... to to work on that pace or to get it right or back to another thing you mentioned there balance is that balance part of it like yeah and I think if you bring your sheep halfway back mm -hmm. and then turn them across the field across the field it's, if it's coming too fast it has to go wider otherwise you're going to make a really wide turn yeah and you teach your dog to make a nice circle around the sheep and if they make an even circle around the sheep then it's much easier to handle than if they go tight wide tight wide Oh yes, and is that what fellas mean when they're talking about that clean flanks? It's keeping that same cast or yeah. space around them the whole yeah. day. There's a couple of things I often think about with sheepdog trials. There's there's the bit where we're all bursting to go out and compete and all, but we also need somebody to let out sheep, and we need somebody to judge, and we need somebody you know to put on the whole thing and put up the course and everything else. And uh, I get a sort of a sense from you that that you feel a little bit of an obligation to give something back, in terms of you know making an effort for for the overall good too yeah i've enjoyed it so much i've, I've enjoyed working with working the dogs and i've got a lot of satisfaction i've done one of had one or two victories but I'd, i have given back i've been president and that's taken four years and uh, i feel i feel like i've done my bit back towards the sheepdog world yeah and is it like in terms of like i i happen to love letting out sheep uh, you know, I might have violated a little bit, but I'll see it as an opportunity. It's an opportunity to do something, but the better job I can do then, the better for competitors. And and I think if you do let sheep out, you see the good dogs coming around the bottom of the field. That's oh, where yes. that's where the sheep should be. The dog should be judged. You should have a judge at the bottom of the field picking the sheep up. Oh yes, yes, and because uh, it's funny the way indirectly sometimes when you make an effort you get something back and like that you absolutely you, get you see you see the what you see the dogs that come round the sheep in the correct manner. Yeah. And lift them properly. That's interesting. And could the same be said of judging then that when you judge that it might sharpen your handling up a little bit and you it does. Us, it yeah. does absolutely. You you learn where you, people are losing points and many people lose points in the same area. So when you go out, you try and do something a little bit different or yeah. try and make it a little bit better. Yeah. Um, the judge's opinion is just that judge on that day, and you. It's a bit like, a bit like medicine. Sometimes it does you good and sometimes it doesn't. And I'm sure you must have had, then as a competitor, you must have had times when, when you know, the judging has gone against you and you say, oh, Absolutely. you know, somebody pulled a stroke on me even there. But how do you, how do you deal with that? I, I know Sunday trials, it doesn't matter so much, but I'm sure it's happened too at a higher level. How, how do you cope with it? Um, I've not really been too bothered about that. I think it's just, just part and parcel of the thing, I think, a little bit. Everybody has a favourite. Everybody has a favourite dog. If it, if it's a dog that you really like to watch, it's hard not to sort of yearn for it to do better. Yes, you know? yes. There's so many aspects to sheep dogs nowadays, and and so many things like like we've got skipped in auctions where fellas prepare dogs for auctions, and then we've got fellas who do a lot of international judging. I even do a little bit of that myself, and. Um, and then, say, in my own case, I, I, I really enjoy breaking out young dogs if I have the, the time. That's my favourite part of it. But for more people, then it'll be trialling and all. Do you know what your favourite part of it or which bit of it do you enjoy most? Um, I get a real buzz if I've helped train somebody and they've really improved. If they oh, start yeah. with a low level and they've got up to a really high level, I really enjoy that. And Somebody might just come for the weekend, stay for the weekend, and they've only got them for three days, and you'd be surprised how much a dog can improve. If it's if it's given the right treatment. Oh, and uh, people come here from abroad for lessons, or they, they come spend a bit of time schooling and training, which you you, you, yeah. you give people help that way. Yeah, and I've had a I've had a sort of trip around the world, going to different countries, and I've really enjoyed it. But I'm getting to the stage now where I don't really want to travel <laughs> on an aeroplane anymore. Yeah, yeah. So people have to come here if they want to see me.
Yes. Oh, that's very good. I didn't know you did that. I, I could probably do it coming over for a little while myself to get some help with that fetching. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not long now till way with dogs and <laughs> I know you're the one fella who won't be too phased by the competition, but you know all those boys a long time, the likes of Aladon and Kevin and uh, Ricky yeah. and all them. She know them fellas a long time, don't you? Yeah, and, and actually we're really good friends, but you know, the bottom line is they are the best handlers in the world. There's nothing, they are the best handlers, those guys. Yeah. You know, and any anybody competing against them is up against it. Yes, yes. And have you decided what dog you're going to use? And I'm going to work my little dog called Jim. Yeah. Uh, He's about four and a half years old. Um, he's a bit of a little dog. He's maybe not an international dog yet, but he's getting there slowly. Yes, yes. He's a nice feel for his sheep. He's easy to run for an old man. <laughs> I haven't seen him before, so I'm going to look forward to that. And listen, it's been great talking to you today. Thank you.